do you still snog? Oh, okay. <laughs> we've we've gone there. We've gone there. There's no warm up to this. Um, well, um, yeah, I guess I do. Is that what everyone else has said? <laughs> Well, it depends. It depends. <laughs> no, because it's it's something I'm. I don't know. It's something I've always been curious about. You know, because when you when you're teenage and stuff, it's so exciting. And then you know, it's yeah. it's a shame if it stops. So I'm glad. I'm glad you still snog. <laughs> then absolutely YOLO. Yeah, YOLO. Come on, come on. You only live life once, and I love that exciting bit of a day. Anyway, I think it's really. You know, like goosebumps and kissing on the first day. You know, it's fun. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's true. And then my second question to you is, could you tell me in three words about your first or big love? Right. OK. Um, well, I just remember that he was a nightclub owner. <laughs> I'm going like red thinking about all of this now. But the memories, you know, and um, I just remember looking at him and thinking, wow, who is that? He is going to be mine. <laughs> and um, he was actually from Malta and um, he was very charming. And um, we ended up going out and I just thought, this is it forever. There's no need to date anyone ever again. This is it. But um, sadly, I think he kind of said a couple of months in, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> But you know they are beautiful in Malta. Actually, I have um, a girlfriend from Malta, and she was Miss Malta, and she oh. actually said to me and my girlfriend once. I remember in London we went to restaurants and stuff, and she felt every she looked like James Bond girl, you know. And so she looked at my friend and myself, and she said, "Oh, you two, you don't know what it feels to be beautiful." <laughs> wow! Wow! Okay. <laughs> No, but they are beautiful, though, I must say. So I can imagine he was very handsome. He's very, very handsome, yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. And then, do you think the intimacy of dance is important? Of dance? Sorry. Yes. Well, yeah, I... Um, do you just mean in general? Yeah, the intimacy of dance. Um. Yeah, I mean, I've trained in dance. Like, I've danced my whole life. So, um, yeah, so um, dance means a lot to me because it's something that I don't think I ever lose, even though I don't dance as much now as what I used to. I think, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you see them on Strictly Come Dancing and they're so close, I mean, it is, it's, it's a connection and, you know, it's a skill. It's a skill to be able to dance and just the music and everything just completely trans sports you to a different world like when I dance I totally forget about everything else um, yeah so if you can be dancing, led into the rhythm of it. absolutely baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's important I think so too and I think it is it's a way of kind of love making isn't it I mean it's 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 a kind of beginning you know of that intimacy well yeah it could be I guess is there a track that will take you back to that moment, you know, of falling in love. Oh, you're really sending me back through the years now. I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, I remember when I was very little, you know, when you have like school crushes and stuff, like especially for you, Jason Donovan and Kylie Minogue. <laughs> I used to be like, I want to be Kylie Minogue. And like, they're so in love. That's like my goal. Um, so I can remember that. And um, yeah, growing up through the years. I mean, my era in my teenage years was the 90s. So any of those kind of 90s kind of sounding songs really does take me back. And I think like music is so powerful. Like when you, you hear a song and you just think, wow, that takes me back. And particularly in lockdown, I listen to so many different songs that almost gives me goosebumps. And it, I think there's different songs that can remind you of different guys and different experiences, happy, sad. I mean, we've all been there when we, you've had a breakup and you're sitting there just listening like to a song over and over and over again. Yeah. And I don't know why we do that to ourselves. We should listen to a happy song and snap out of it. That's what I would do now, you know, but when I was younger, yeah, I can definitely, you know, remember just playing that sad song, Mariah Carey. <laughs> 
<laughs> on repeat. I remember that myself. I was sitting in the car actually crying and just listening to the sound. <laughs> I know I've got, I've got totally a different way now, but yeah, it, it's no one really teaches you. You have to learn yourself, don't you? But yeah, the the tears, you know, the weeks, the months, and, and the sad song. You know, yeah. we've all been there. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a way of growing up, isn't it? I mean, it's it's. Yeah. I don't think it's normal or natural not to have gone through it. To be honest, you know, I think it's yeah. I think you have to learn. I think you do because you don't know when you're seventeen, eighteen, and you think it's like for real. You think it's amazing and you just think that's how life's going to be. But obviously, you know, time will tell and, you know, it's good to experience different experiences with different people. So, yeah, absolutely. And it's that Romeo and Juliet, you know. Romeo and Juliet, absolutely. We still live for the fairy tale. <laughs> and then we are very excited to hear how it all started with you with Sky TV and with music. And how did it all begin? Um, well, I used to be a dancer and a dance teacher before I got into TV and radio. Um, yeah. And I actually had my own dance school. Well, I shared it with a friend. We had a theatre school. We taught singing, acting and dancing to children. Wow. And then one day I got interviewed on the radio about the theatre school. And when I was sat there, they were like, keep talking, keep talking. And I thought, wow, I've never thought of doing this as a job. But every other job. I've got the sack from for talking too much. So this is like perfect. And then I ended up shadowing a breakfast shift and then uh, just going in every day and just kind of getting familiar with it and then working my way up in radio. And then I did a work placement at ITV Studios and wow. um, I got to experience what it would be like on this morning on Loose Women. And I just sat there and I literally got goosebumps and I thought, wow this is where I want to be, this is my vision, like this, it just felt right, something like just clicked inside of me and I thought this is it, so yeah, I um, I was lucky to have that opportunity, uh, I don't know if they still do the work placements now at ITV, but I was lucky to do that and that was only a couple of years ago, I haven't been doing it that long, so yeah. Oh, well, you create your own luck, no? <laughs> yeah, oh absolutely, yeah, people think, oh yeah, you're really lucky and it's like, no, there's no luck about it, it it's the hard yeah. work that goes on behind the Instagram, that goes on behind the scenes that nobody sees. Like I was up last night when I got in, you know, working before I went to bed, making sure things were sorted, sending out emails. And this morning I could follow them up and people don't see that side of it. But I always say it when I go into colleges and I chat with students, you know, it's it's hard work. And if you don't want it enough, then it won't happen because you'd be like, oh, I just can't be bothered because it, it's a tough industry, as you know, you know, music yeah. or dance or acting or, or presenting you've got to have that drive and you've got to want it enough. Yeah, I love that image actually. You know, when you see the water and you see just the mountain tops above, but you don't see underneath all the work, you know, all the, yeah. place, you know, yeah, I love so that image. Because you'd love someone to come and knock on your door and be like, oh, would you like to come on telly this morning? And it's, you know, in an ideal world, that'd be amazing. But you've got to keep fighting. You've got to get, keep, you know, you get rejected all the time. Yeah. You know, no one talks about that on Instagram. And that's something I like to stress a lot. You know, the rejection, even yeah. when you start to make steps in the industry, is still getting rejected. And it's it could just be someone's opinion at that time. And that person could leave the company in six months. And it could Absolutely. be someone else there now. So you've got to try again. And mm. it's nothing personal. I, I never take it personally. It's just, it yeah. is what it is at the time. And you might take a box or you might not. You might be the right look that they're looking for. You might not. So you just got to keep going and, and, and have your vision exactly where you want to go. True. Very true. No, great advice. So listen, everyone. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's super important. No, it is. And especially for the for the young generation, you know, they should just keep knocking on those doors. They shouldn't stop. Yeah, people don't want to do the hard work. You know, I get it. I get it. Of course, we don't want to do the hard work. But unfortunately, you know, no agent or manager or anyone else is going to do it for you. That's what I've learned. You think, oh, but that person could have done that. No, 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 no. It all comes down to you. Everything comes down to you, your work ethic, your attitude. It's it's you all the way. And you're the only one that can make it happen. And, and we've all got it inside of us. Yeah. But for me, it happened later on in life. Like in my 20s, you know, I was just partying and going out with the wrong guys and not really paying attention at all without any focus. And then it's only oh, now that I wake up. Like, you have right. fun. That's yeah. important. What's that? Sorry. 
No, you had fun, and that's also important. Yeah, I had lots of fun. Good. Everyone knows me as being fun, and I and I still am really fun. But also, <laughs> I'm hardworking, Haley, as well. So sometimes I'm like, no, guys, I've got to go home. I've got to go and finish that off. And people are like, no, come on, stay out. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I have to so sometimes that's hard for me because my yeah. natural thing is to go out partying all night but no, I've had to calm myself down <laughs> <laughs> I love that and then who is your favorite that you have interviewed up till now because you do interview you know uh, lots of stars from the 80s and lots of amazing musicians and talents out there so is there one that was like more fun to interview than any of the others well, you can't. Oh, there's, there's been so many. And I have to say, most people that you interview, you know, especially when you get to know them, I, I just love hearing people's stories because yeah. most likely people haven't just made it overnight. They've literally been rejected like five times and you haven't heard about that bit. And I, I love hearing how people have mm. got to where they've got to. But the most interesting one, I think, was when I went to Lady Colin Campbell. I went to her castle to interview her. Yeah. And it was just such an experience going to this beautiful castle and just seeing where she lived is such a different world. And that was so exciting. I actually got lost going to the toilet. I couldn't find my way back. It was that big. It was amazing. Uh, and also I interviewed Michael Bolton uh, for my Christmas Day special. He's <sighs> one of my mum's favourites. And he was just the most nicest guy. You know, you just meet someone and you're like, could you be any nicer like my heart just melted he was just such a gentleman and you know sometimes you interview someone and you end up becoming friends with them or um, end up chatting for another hour afterwards and you know like for me that's like a real person it's not just put on for the cameras you know you get to know the real them so um yeah I, I love it yeah, which is beautiful. And it's also an energy, isn't it? It's like, uh, you know, I think we're a bit like the animals in that sense. You know, we feel with someone, you know, they're nice people out there. But with some people, you have that special energy, you know, it's something clicks. Yeah, you do feel people's energy straight away. You should, absolutely. And um, yeah, I mean, I love people in show business. You know, they've all, like I said, they've always got a story to tell. Um but yeah, it's 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 really interesting to hear where people have come from, and um, you know, I just I just love talking, so it's probably the best <laughs> thing. <laughs> I love that. And then my question to you is, how do you, does the word music make you feel? I think music makes me feel incredible. Music is a big part of my life. I'd rather listen to music than watch the TV. And I literally have a playlist for every occasion. So if I'm happy, I'm sad or frustrated or whatever, I've got I've got it. I've got girl power songs when I need it. I've got just like real feel good vibe songs because I'm all about the feel good vibes that you put out there. I think you get back. So sometimes I just walk down the street. In fact, people say to me, I saw you walking down the street and I waved to you and you didn't wave back. And I'm like, that's because I got Britney on full blast walking down. <laughs> road sorry about that so, um yeah and I have music in the gym and just all the time I think music is an absolute game changer probably a little bit underrated really because it can change your mood and if you can change your mood if you can change your state that you're in then yeah. you're going to change your day so I put music on first thing in the morning have a little boogie you're putting yourself in a really good state for that day. And I know it's hard, and, I can, and sometimes I don't feel like it, but sometimes when you hear those songs, you can just hear the first beat of those songs, and you're like, woo, yeah, let's go. So, but it's a yeah, great I think, advice. Yes. I love that. I love that advice, you know, to put on your favourite song when, when you get ready in the morning. That's a great thing to do. Everyone should do that. I think that's a brilliant advice. It is. It's, it's actually yeah. medicine. It's medicine because, you know, especially in England, when actually, actually the sun's shining now, but usually it's raining, and yeah. you do. Like, I, I'm the same. Like I'm not naturally like that. I wake up and I'm like, oh, like that. And then you just put on your tunes, and you're like, no, I'm not having this. I'm changing it. You know. So I think, I think, you know, if you're feeling a bit low, I think definitely have a playlist of those yeah. songs that make you feel really good. And it's very personal. Like I'm sure my songs probably a bit cheesy for other people, but mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> I'm sure they're not. I'm sure I would love them. I would boogie with you for sure. <laughs> Woo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh but thank you so much i was so happy that you uh, i could get to interview you that's wonderful my pleasure <laughs> thank you so much for having me and yeah let's do yeah. the music for a little bit again yeah <laughs> we need to i'm gonna put on my favorite song now and start dancing around the house <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, definitely. Do it. Do it. I will. I will. Oh, so lovely to meet you. And when I come to London, I'm definitely going to tell you and we'll have to have a coffee. <laughs> you too. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Have a good day. Lots of love.